for the first time in history, much of the natural world is adversely affected by human activity. When I was born, back in 1930, there were two billion people on Earth. Today, that number has jumped to 6.8 billion. Furthermore, it's going to increase, and that increase is just unsustainable. There isn't room on Earth for that number of humans. A number of us got together and decided, you know, why don't we have a sort of multidisciplinary group of people who are concerned about this to discuss it? And this resulted in uh, a wonderful meeting that was organized by my colleague uh, Malcolm Potts at the University of California in Berkeley called The World in 2050. Uh, we had this meeting the day after Barack Obama was inaugurated, which seemed sort of particularly significant. And we had two days of intense um, discussions by people from all over the world about What's the world going to look like in 2050? Okay, we know that thanks to Al Gore producing this amazing book and documentary, An Inconvenient Truth, showing that global warming is now a major factor that we should all be concerned about. So the question that began to develop in all our minds at this Berkeley meeting in January was, could it be that these two enormous problems the excessive growth rate of the human population and now the global warming leading to environmental um, change uh, which could spell disaster are these two related and that although in many of the books that you'll read about um, uh, global warming uh, including Al Gore's book um, they never discuss uh, human population growth. So at the end of our Bixby conference in Berkeley, uh, we reached a very simple sort of conclusion. Rapid population growth in the developing world and the excessive use of natural resources in the developed world is changing the environment, creating global warming and threatening every life system on Earth. It was very exciting to discover um, a few months later that the English medical journal The Lancet should come out with a special issue where the main article, which is 40 pages long, uh, comes up with the conclusion that climate change is the biggest global health threat of the 21st century and refers back to the fact that this climate change is largely an end result of too many people. Why is it that human population growth has just sort of suddenly taken off? In 1965, when I heard the great Sir Dougal Baird, professor of obstetrics at the University of Aberdeen, give a wonderful talk which he called a fifth freedom question mark. And he said, in addition to the four freedoms that President Roosevelt announced, uh, you know, freedom of religion, um, and freedom to express your opinions and freedom from want and freedom from fear. Uh, Dougal Baird said, we need a fifth freedom for women. Freedom from the tyranny of excessive fertility. And I remember when he said it, I thought, wow, what an amazing thought. That's it. He's put his finger on it. We have denied women access and control to the means for controlling their own fertility. If we just look in our own societies, what have we done wrong? We've kept all contraceptive devices only available on medical prescription. Absolute bunkum. Make the pill available off prescription from chemists 
to anyone who goes in and wants to buy it. And just by increasing the availability of contraception for women and making sure that those contraceptives are available throughout the developing world, which at the moment they are absolutely not, we could have a staggering impact lowering human population growth for the future. An economist, Jeffrey Sachs, in his latest book, Commonwealth, says fair and square, we can't let the world's population get to 9.1 billion by 2050. And this is the first economist who's really standing up and saying there are limits to growth. Very recently, uh, a young student at the London School of Economics, uh, Thomas Weyer, has uh, submitted an intriguing thesis reducing future carbon emissions by investing in family planning. And he's done a very careful cost-benefit analysis and has shown all the ways that we've got of uh, controlling carbon emissions. The single most cost-effective is family planning. It's amazing. So we've designed a global warming t-shirt. Stop global warming, take the pill. So some exciting things are going to be happening at the end of this year. Uh, in December, we've got the World Climate Change Conference in Copenhagen, and the Royal Society published as a result of our Bixby Conference. It's called The Impact of Population Growth on Tomorrow's World, with all the details of population growth, climate change, and how we can do something about it. So here we will have an amazing spectrum of scientific opinion to present to that climate conference and say, hey guys, the problem is us. There are too many of us. And we can solve that by giving women the fifth freedom, freedom to control their fertility. And if that came up in the Copenhagen Climate Conference and was listened to and acted upon, we could all breathe much easier for the future. Make every birth a wanted birth.